Hey there, in this episode I'll be specifically talking about how to create, oh not create, how to change the texture size. So if you just go into the content, type texture, select the type of texture, you can go into the texture and there's something in here called maximum texture size. It's set, uh, the default value is zero definitely. Uh, and it means that whatever you import to the game, it will be the uh, the final size of the texture. In this case, it's gonna be 10 megabytes roughly, which is a lot when you're working on mobile devices or uh, when you're running low on storage and you want to just reduce the size of the package of your game. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. The first thing you have to do, we are going to create a script for it. It's called, uh, let's go ahead in the edit plugins, it's called I'm just type in scripting uh, editor you scripting utilities if it's not turned on make sure that this is turned on and uh, after that you'll probably have to restart the editor so make sure you do so and then you just go into the blueprints folder I mean you definitely have to create a blueprints folder if you don't have one um, make sure you are working neatly and everything's just in place and make sure you follow the naming conventions. These are really important. So in the blueprints folder, right click. Now in the editor utilities, you have two options. I'm not going to talk about the widget right now. Widget mostly gets used in uh, when you want to work with the actors in the scene. In this case, I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a blueprint because I want to work on assets instead of actors right now. I mean, you can definitely work on actors with the blueprints as well, but right now I'm just working on assets. So if you want to, you can go ahead and search whatever you want. But at this moment, we are going to be using asset action utility. Uh, make it, uh, name it something, BLU, follow the naming convention and then test for example I've already created it so I'm just going to delete what I've created just now um, and then open it up the first thing you have to do is go to the class defaults and make sure you add one class uh, click on this one um, and then in here type in texture Go all the way down until you find texture. The supported class should be uh, on this texture, should be set on texture. If not, it won't work. If you're working on Unreal Engine 4, it's, uh, it doesn't work like this. You need to go into the, so instead of two override uh, functions in the blueprint, you have three in Unreal Engine 4. So you just go ahead and uh, Click on this and you have something else called supported classes. Just click on that and instead you'll have something like this. And instead just delete this and in here, make sure you choose texture. I mean, I'm working right now, I'm working on Engine 5 so I can't really show you anything. Okay, so right now we have to create a function. Just type function test. So I've already created it. I don't need to do that anymore. Double click on it. You go into the function and the first thing you have to do get selected actor. So it means that when you go into the content type, when you type in texture um, and when you select them because you want to bash them all together and uh, work on them on a mass scale, right? So we have to first get them all. So we know what we're dealing with. So get selected actors, just type in get selected actors, assets, I'm sorry, get selected assets. And then we are going to have to do a loop, obviously. So just come in here, loop, a for each loop. And for every loop, it's going to cast to texture because we're working on texture. If you're working on static meshes, you need to uh, both have the supported class set to static mesh and then cast it to static mesh. In this case, we are just going to cast to texture here. 
So for every texture that is get, uh, getting cast to textures and are successfully casted, we are going to create a copy for undo buffer. This is important because sometimes we probably have done something that we don't want them so we could just go ahead and undo them if we don't copy it into the undo buffer we can't do that so just go ahead and undo create copy for undo buffer and then so this is just to make sure that the texture we're working on right now and we want to check is not set to um something else before so we don't want to do something twice so it just sa says that if the maximum texture size is more than 512 or if you want to you can just go ahead and change it to 256 that doesn't matter but all it's saying is that this is not changed right this is not touched at all so if i change it to for example 256 then it won't work. This is all we want. This is already what we've already wanted to have, right? So if it's 512 or 256, it won't run. It just checks on it, then it just understands that it's fine, and then it goes to the next check texture. But for example, if it's uh, 1024, it will make sure that the maximum texture size is what you want. So this is the first thing that you have to that you need to keep in mind. So just go ahead and maximum maximum texture size and make sure it's greater than 512. Or if it's set to zero, because the default value is zero. So if it's set to zero, it means that it hasn't been touched. So we don't want it to um, do anything if it's in the default value um, or boolean and you just type them together and this is another um, condition that we need to have because the MIPGEN settings if you're working on uh, user interface textures most of the times you uh, probably have something that's not a power of two textures so this is something else. I mean, I'm not going into the details very much, but some people tend to create user interface, which is wrong. I don't really accept it, but some people tend to create user interfaces uh, with some other sizes, like a full HD, which is not a power of two, like 1980 by um, 1280, I guess. Nine, oh, 1920 by 1280. That's, that's not acceptable and that's not the power of two in a game engine. If you're working on emotion graphics, then fine. But in a game engine, everything has to be a power of two. But if it's not a power of two, then it's not a from texture group. The, no, where was it? Yeah, the MIPGEN settings not a not from texture group. It's going to be from no MIP maps because it doesn't have any MIP, map, MIP maps. It's not a power of two. So we're going to check that as well. So we could just go ahead and MIPGEN settings, get this one. And then if it's equal, no, not equal, you know. Uh, it, it must be equal to an enum because it's an enum uh, to no MIP maps we don't want this so not no, we want a not boolean and then if these two conditions are correct then we'll have an and boolean and this goes into the branch right here which I've already created I just wanted to show you this And then if it's correct, if it's just um, all the conditions are correct, then we have to change some things, right? So that's the tricky part. That's something that you can't really find it easily on the internet. I, I mean, I dug a lot about it. So 
get path name for loaded asset and once you got the name of it you can just go ahead and use the name to print it out but later on and then you can just set editor property uh, and property value is going to the property name is going to be max texture size um where was it I always maximum texture size so if you type in maximum texture texture size don't know why it doesn't work you need to specifically type max texture size so as if max make sure that the m is um you type it with the caps lock on max texture size this is important and the value you just go ahead and make literal int and whatever value you want 512 probably and that's it i guess um and then if it's it was if it was successful we need to save it we don't really want to save everything by hand if it was successful then hit a branch again and then print screen um then we have the name here so you can just use the name and then we need to check out the loaded asset if you are working on a server you need to check it out if not you don't really need this one if you're working at home you can just save the loaded assets as if save loaded asset or check out the loaded assets um and that's it so i'm just going to show you everything if you want to make sure everything's fine you have no mistake in everywhere whatsoever okay now that we've created it the way we can use it is very simple you can just go ahead and uh, make sure select shift select for example these five textures i want to make sure that they're all set to 512 because as i told you mm, it's a really big texture and this is 10 megabytes look how small it will get when i um use this uh, uh, scripting asset so you have the when you right click on them scripted asset actions default texture size change to 512 this is what i've named the texture size change to 512 this is the function we've created right click default texture size change to 512 and bam, everything's 512 it was 10 megabytes now look how small it is 171 kilobytes not even a megabyte not even half a megabyte 171 kilobytes so this is pretty important if you are working on a game it should be optimized for the people because if you don't optimize your game for people it means that you don't respect them <laughs> to respect your audience optimize your game if you feel like a texture is too big for your material or for your scene just make sure it um, has the appropriate size that is important so all the textures are 341 100 something all textures are smaller than usual so these textures can be used in mobile devices as well um, and that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please hit that like button have a great day bye